photo contest 2022. So opening slide. Um, the, the photo contest is something that I just started doing last year. So this second year, uh, we have almost a thousand members or maybe a thousand members in the club. And it was just another way to try to keep a few more people and uh, members engaged. Uh, I We had a little bit more success uh, in our second year, a few more entries, and we'll go through everything tonight. But on this opening page, uh, this is what you get if you send me a photo for the photo contest. So for this year's prizes, um, I just selected the top three photos. If in the write up on the web, I had a couple of different categories, pictorial, documentary, et cetera, that didn't really work. So like I said, I just picked my favorite three photos and those are gonna be our winners. Uh, if you are one of those three people, uh, you get a choice of either one of these fancy schmancy Opinel mushroom knives uh, made in France. These are really good quality or a year subscription to Fungi Magazine. And if you are best in show, you your fame will live on through Sequinota next year because I intend to take your photo and turn it into a jigsaw puzzle that we will make at Sequinota. And that's what this upper right-hand photo is supposed to be. Um, but in my photo contest, I like to have everybody be a winner. So if you sent me a photo in the coming weeks, I will be sending you a customized calendar of all the best entries from this year. And here in the center is the one that I did from last year. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first up, we have a photo by our outgoing program chair, John Harper. This is of the veiled oyster i think this is an excellent excellent photo it 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 does appear to be a little bit phallic to me but uh maybe that i don't know nonetheless that's a that's a wonderful photo uh, and uh second page apparently people like to take photos of purple mushrooms i think there are four or five photos of the viscid violet cortinarius cortinarius iotes in the photo contest i always like to see these these little salmon colored entolomas the entoloma quadratum here's a cool photo john took of some honey mushrooms here's a mushroom in need of a haircut nice photos john got a lot of Mycena photos in this year's contest. Uh, this is what they call the common Mycena, Mycena galericulata. Also got a lot of these photos this year, the golden fairy spindle. Uh, these are um, pretty common and striking. The uh, There's another uh, clavulinopsis that is pink colored or salmon colored. It's called Aranto cinnabarinus. It's uh, also very nice, but nobody took a photo of it this year. All we got were the golden fairy spindles. You also see that we have some partridge berry in this photo. Uh, they also call this twin flower. These are, uh, a lot of people mistake these down here for winter green, but uh, these partridge berries have absolutely no taste whatsoever. Here's a picture of the devil's dipstick. You gotta love these stink horns. I think they're fascinating. Uh, I, probably most people online already know. They disperse their spores by attracting carry-on insects. And true to form, there's a little fly hanging out on the top of that one. A lot of people mistake this mushroom for a chanterelle. It has decurrent gills. You can see them here running down the side of the stipe. But this is not a chanterelle. Um, this chanterelles grow on soil. They're mycorrhizal with trees. This guy is a uh, sapotroph. It's breaking down 
the uh, is breaking down wood. Uh, you find this growing on uh, like old logs. Another picture of the golden fairy spindle. Don't know what that mushroom is, but it's got a happy little ant in the middle of it. Here is the purple gilled Lacaria. Uh, people apparently thought this was very photogenic this year. You're going to see this. We see this several times. A nice young tender chicken mushroom. I'm very partial to this mushroom. This is a witch's hat mushroom. And you can see as it gets older, it, it uh, will gradually turn black. This is another good edible, but not until you've been at this game for a while. This is, uh, if, if the identification is true, this is a parasol mushroom. Always love to see these. I, just think they're happy little mushrooms. There you are. These are your jelly babies uh, tucked into exactly where they should be, into that moss. Get extra points for submitting a photo of a slime mold. Slime molds got kicked out of Kingdom Fungi a long time ago, but they're, I feel, universally beloved by all mycologists, amateur and professional alike. This one is probably your most common slime mold. Uh, it's either called uh, scrambled egg slime, which is more PC, and a lot of people call it the dog vomit slime mold. John Dawson has been the guiding hand behind the Eastern Pennsylvania Mushroom Club for many, many, many years. I brought him to DC several years ago to give us a lecture on microscopic photography. You can see in this and the next couple of slides why he's uh, very well equipped to give a lecture on that topic. This is that purple gilled Lacaria showing you a nice macro photography shot of it and the fork gills that it has. I can't tell you how much it pains me to say this um, because I respect John so much. Uh, in his other entry, he said this was a lungwort lichen, and I don't think that that is true. So lichens, <clears throat> so lichens are a composite organism. Uh, vast majority of the biomass is fungal. That's what we call the mycobiont. The and the other obligate part in that composite organism is something it can photosynthesize. About 95% of the time, it's algae. The other 5% of the time, it is a cyanobacteria. Lichens that have a cyanobacteria tend to be very dark, like this one is. Um, and if you have a cyanobacteria photobiont as your partner that has a great advantage because cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen. And that's almost always the um, limiting element for uh, life, uh, life uh, terrestrial life. The, um, the problem though with cyanobacteria and making that your photobiont, uh, you don't get something for nothing in nature and they have much higher moisture requirements. So you will always find, you almost always find lichens with cyanobacteria partners growing in wet areas, usually like uh, around the base of a tree or in moss, like where you have here. I believe this is a Peltigera species, genus of lichens. These are called dog lichens. Um, and the reason why is you see these apothecia, these are where the, Spores are produced. Uh, somebody thinks that that looks like a dog tooth. Mm. Uh, this is a great photo, uh, micro, microscopy photo by John. He used this for a class he was teaching. So that's why you have the upper part explaining what you're looking at. Um, so for this particular fungus, this is actually a ento, entomom, yeah, yeah, some impossible word. It's a fungus that it attacks insects. 
This one attacks ladybugs. And I found a photo on Wiki Commons, stuck it down here in the bottom right so you can see what I, what I mean. That's a really cool photo though, of that. Like this photo a lot, we see oyster mushrooms. People were really partial to taking photos of oyster mushrooms this year. Uh, this is your summer oyster mushroom. Yeah, nice backlit photo like that. Here's the uh, the uh, stock scar one of the stock scarlet cups. So uh, here's another picture of a summer oyster, and as you can see, it's it's got all kinds of um, yellow material covering it. So with these summer oysters, I think I think the there's almost two obligate organisms that go with them. You uh, often have these black beetles. Those are called pleasing fungus beetles. And uh, you often have these yellow slime molds. Uh, so much so that I saw in Gary Linkoff's Audubon Field Guide to Mushrooms that uh, he has a quote in there. It says that that's a, that's a diagnostic feature of oyster mushrooms <laughs> is this yellow slime mold. I did some research online. I cannot figure out though what yellow slime mold that is. Some people said it was Fusarium polycephalum. That's the slime mold they use in, uh, that they use to study in the laboratory. So that's the one that they use to solve mazes and things like that. Uh, I saw other research online that said that that's not it. It's is something else, perhaps that Budhamia that I listed. Nice photo though. So this is the garden giant, the uh, the wine cap mushroom um, growing right exactly where you would expect it to be in your in your uh, mulch bed. Uh, this is uh, this is a good edible mushroom. This is usually the gateway mushroom for people who want to get into cultivation. It's really, really simple to grow. Uh, the, uh, you don't want to let it get too much older than that. It's better whenever it's young, like most mushrooms. And uh, the other reason is the slugs adore this thing. So you have to get to it before they, they uh, poke a bunch of holes in it. This is called the smoky oysterling. I, I like that photo a lot. It's a fetching little mushroom. Here's the uh, here's the um, a uh, Copronis comatus. This is the uh, shaggy mane, a little bit older, starting to deliquesce. It's a uh, Amanita from that Lepidella group. Uh, I said it's probably Cocori. It has uh, it'll have a uh, carrot shaped root underneath it. Here's another striking mushroom, the shaggy stalked belete. Uh, I think this is also called the birch belete. Look at all that reticulation on the stipe. Nice backlit photo of uh, some, some jack-o'-lanterns. And who doesn't love a picture of some mushrooms with a happy dog in it? Look at that friendly fella. Okay, I was calling this Amanita flaviconi up until about 10 minutes ago, but now I don't know what to call it. So uh, I'm just gonna say yellow patches. <laughs> Got a lot of pictures of old man of the woods this year. Folks like, take, like taking pictures of that belief. I don't, I'm not sure what this is. Um, Jeff suggested Merasmius and I don't have a better guess. So I left it as that. Uh, Kind of dig that photo though, with a with a jet black background. So these rust fungi, these are pretty crazy uh, part of uh, kingdom fungi. They have two different host plants. Uh, for this one, this is the cedar apple rust fungi. So they call it cedar because it's growing on a eastern red cedar here, but uh, a cedar is actually a juniper tree. So they, if they wanted to be more technically correct, they should be calling it the juniper apple rust fungi. Turkey tail fungus. 
true turkey tail, not the false turkey tail we just learned about. This looks like a tawny grisette to me. This is one of the most common mushrooms you find in the woods. Uh, I don't really pause to look at it. It's so ubiquitous very often. But I like this photo. This is the um, ceramic parchment, Asterium complicatum. Love to see these guys. Got a couple photos of them in the contest. Um, so this, this mushroom, it has an opening at the top, and osteo is the technical name for that. And it has this, um, it, uh, it has this red pigmentation around the hole. The uh, common name for this is hot lips. And um, <clears throat> that shows up uh, also in the genus name, Calistoma is translated to beautiful mouth. So that's what they're talking about, the lipstick on this. The uh, cinnabarinum, uh, you see some variation of cinnabar show up in all kinds of mushroom epithets. Cinnabar is the mineral uh, mercury sulfide, and uh, they used to grind it up and use it in pigment. And if you made a pigment out of that stuff, or if you made a paint out of that pigment, the name of that paint would have been vermilion. So uh, you see a lot of a lot of things called cinnabar in, in mycology. Nice picture of a uh, coral fungus. Uh, Banghi suggested that this is Romeria aurea. I'm not familiar with that species. It kind of looks like Formosa to me. Not sure. Here's a couple of pairs pear-shaped puffballs, right where they ought to be growing on top of that dead wood, and a happy little ant crawling across the one on the left-hand side. The William Spiller, he, uh, he must be into cultivating mushrooms. He sent several photos of uh, things that he's growing at home. Here's the first one, the snow oyster. Here you have the king oyster. We just saw that in that episode of Chicago PD. Uh, maybe this is one of the ones they used in that episode. Uh, if you want to, if you don't feel like cultivating these on your own, you can usually just go down to your local Asian grocery store and find these. Here's a medicinal mushroom that actually tastes pretty good. Uh, lion's mane mushroom. And, but I'm kind of partial to the Japanese name for it, Yamabushitake. You know, a couple photos of a choice edible. I don't think I've ever come across anybody who dislikes this edible mushroom. Uh, this is the hen of the woods, mitake. Up here in Pennsylvania, where I am right now, they call it ram's head. Another photo of that. Mike Wang cemented a photo of a little fry up he did with some smooth chanterelles and tossed a couple of edible borage flowers onto there. Uh, borage is a garden herb. Uh, it has uh, fuzzy little leaves that you can eat as well. They taste like cucumbers. Did another one of an earth star. I think it's Fimbriatum, not sure. And another scarlet cup. And another picture of a purple court. <laughs> and another picture of a foliota. Uh, I can never figure out what the difference is between squarososa and squarosoides. Here's a tree that's either dead or dying, but giving up a really nice flush of prime oyster mushrooms. They call this mushroom the consolation prize for morale hunters. I disagree with that. I think it's a really good edible. Uh, not at this stage, this is too old when it's really young. Some people say it smells like watermelon. I apparently don't have a good sense of smell. It just smells like a mushroom to me. You want to get the, you want to harvest this when it's really young. It's a polypore. So you can see in the other photo, uh, evidence of that. Isabella far takes nice pictures, a nice picture of a, of a enoki mushroom. Soilus mushrooms don't get a lot of culinary currency. 
um, but uh, which I disagree with. I think they can be pretty good. This is the best of the lot. This is the painted Sawillis. And there's our culinary chair with a clever photo of a fawn mushroom. They call it a fawn mushroom because maybe because of its brownish color. Uh, some people say it's because the micro microscopic structures that hold the spores look like they have antlers. So who's to say? And another oyster mushroom. And I think this is the first and only photo that we have of the true honey mushroom, Malaya. A couple chanterelles. There's a meme online, is this Chaga? And they'll show something like a picture of a dog's nose because people want to call everything Chaga. This looks like Chaga to me. I can't really tell if that's a birch tree, but it looks like you're, it looks like you got the right one, Don. Just learned about false turkey tail. So again, I called this Sterium Australia, but that would be wrong. <laughs> Some oyster mushrooms, chicken of the woods. And here's those wine cap mushrooms again, the garden giants. And Don's got a good sense of humor, got a little smiley face on his bag of what looks like blue oyster mushrooms. Got a lot of pictures of my scene as this year. Here's, uh, it's awfully small. I'm not sure what to call this, little coral mushroom. Uh, I called it the crown tip, crown tip coral. Uh, for lack of a better guess. Good picture shows both stages of the aborted antiloma. Uh, this antiloma, this is what the antiloma species mushroom looks like. This over here is a honey mushroom that is being attacked and consumed by this mushroom, turning the edible, a good edible honey mushroom into an even better edible mushroom, in my opinion, uh, called, and uh, with the common name of shrimp of the woods. These are a pain to clean, but they're, they're worth it. So hang on, folks. We'll be, morel season will be here before you know it. <laughs> Chuck Earp. Showing his artistic talents. Another uh, dryad saddle. This is how I usually find a pair shaped puff balls, like a hundred of them all, all jammed together. This is a mushroom. This is an invasive species. Been around for about 15 years. It's called Asian beauty. Uh, you see it everywhere now, especially on the cracks in oak trees. I think Laura was messing with me. She sent me a picture of a snail instead of a mushroom. So anyhow, I decided to keep it in there. Hmm. Yeah, a woodier mushroom. I'm not sure what we call these anymore. Uh, one resource I saw said it called it Auricularia uh, Americana. So this is a lungwort lichen. We call it lungwort because once upon a time, what used to pass as medical science was if a plant or something looked like a part of your body, uh, that was God trying to tell you that it was medicine, medicinal for that part of your body. Somebody thought... This lichen looked like lungs, so they actually used to eat this to cure respiratory ailments. Uh, this is the most nondescript mushroom. Whenever it's dried out, just pastes right against the side of the tree, and it's totally nondescript. Have a little bit of a precipitation event, though, and it looks like it's trees ready to take off in flight. Love this one. So amongst lichens, I think there are 99% of lichens have a ascomycete as their mycobiont. Uh, so uh, only 1% uh, 
are I have basidiomycetes. If you don't know, basidiomycete is generally a mushroom with a gill, a pore, or a tooth. In the Northeast, I'm only aware of two lichens that are basidiomycetes. Uh, one Mitch talked about about two months ago, that's Multiclavula mucida. And this is the other one. This is as rare as hen's teeth. Uh, so this is the fruiting body. This is not lichenized. The lichen itself is actually this green schmutch uh, nestled down here into the moss. Here's a composite pro pro uh, photo of a couple different lichens. This one that's stacked, this is called the ladder lichen. Uh, over here, this is the common powder horn. And here we have the iconic British soldier. I am not crazy about this photo, but I included it because I love the name. This is the fairy puke of lichen. <laughs> Another picture of Mycena, I just noticed up here, it looks like that might be Ascocorn sarcoides. It's not rendered close enough, little, little Asco cup. April, showing a good sense of humor. I learned this year that Chicken in the Woods has a acronym, we'll call it COW. So that looks like a dinosaur eating a cow. <laughs> not sure if that's a T-Rex or a raptor. <laughs> Called it a T-Rex. I love these orange Mycenas, Mycena Leiana. Extra points for April for taking a photo of a lichen. You always get extra points from me for those. This is a uh, pixie cup lichen. Barbara takes nice photos. Uh, here you have an indigo milky and, uh, and uh, it's kind of a nice photo because the in she has indigo nail polish on as well, or <laughs> a uh, nail color as well. Mm. Really like this mushroom. This is a uh, this is a frost belief. It's easy to distinguish by all that reticulation on the stalk. It has a bit of acid in it. So if you cook this up with a bit of olive oil or something, it basically tastes like makes its own vinaigrette. In Mexico, they call this panza agria, which translates to sour belly because of that acid. Gonna have to wait another 15 years for to see these guys again. That's a uh, massaspora cicadina that infects uh, the periodic cicadas. Nice picture of some purple corals. I'm calling it, those gills look greenish to me. I'm calling this the uh, macro lepiota molybides. Another nice close up of an old man of the woods. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, maybe a Ganoderma. Looks cool though, with all the moisture on it. This to me looks like a Caloplaca lichen. Those are fire dot lichens. Corey said he took this over in Sweden. Uh, nice and striking uh, against what looks to be like basalt. These to me look like angel wing lichens. We don't see these a lot around DC because they grow on conifers. Here's another cow. <laughs> So this is also a really, in my opinion, a choice edible, but only whenever you consume it raw. You can't, it doesn't hold up well if you try to cook it. This is the beefsteak polypore, Fistulina hepatica. So now we get, finally get to our winners. Isabella had this great photo of, of hot lips and uh, just love that. That's backlit. Look at all that sunshine coming through that abundant aspic uh, piled up around the base of these. That's a really nice photo. Isabella takes nice photos. Barbara also takes nice photos. Here's one of chocolate tube slime. You get extra credit for lichens and, and slime molds with me. Uh, and 
This is an abundant amount of chocolate tube. And this is our best in show. Uh, John Dawson again, you can see why he uh, teaches uh, teaches classes on macro and microscopic photography. Uh, this fungus is attacking a spider. So that's what that's what's down below here. And that's my last parting photo. That's a couple of empties from lichen vineyard nestled in with all of that reindeer uh, lichen. That was great, Tom. And thanks for everyone that sent in the, the pictures. It's fun this time of year when we're not finding so much outside to have a little eye candy 